For centuries, hollow earth conspiracy theorists have tried to prove there's a whole other world beneath our own. It's thought that Agartha is a metropolis or kingdom on earth, populated by advanced alien species who once lived on the surface of the earth as humans, but have since evolved into some kind of advanced race in their eons underground. People have long held the belief that another world exists beneath the surface of our globe. Many cultures, like the ancient Greeks, view it as a gloomy region inhabited by spirits of the dead. However, the majority of those early notions had mythological or metaphorical roots. There are reportedly numerous entrances to this underground city of Agartha, some of which are energy in and out wells, including Kentucky Mammoth Cave in the US, the enigmatic Bermuda Triangle, the Soviet Union, and an intriguing one being in the Himalayan mountains in Tibet, which are allegedly guarded by Hindu monks. According to contemporary science, the Earth is made up of an uninterrupted series of crust, layers, and molten magma that surrounds a thick, heated core that is mainly composed of iron and nickel. However, several of the top scientists at the time in the 17th century held a contrary view, which was that the globe is hollow. The 18th century mathematician Leonard Euler and Dr. Edmund Halley, yes, the same Edmund Halley who discovered Halley's Comet and was a royal astronomer of England, both came to the same conclusion that the Earth was hollow on the inside, with three floors containing a central sun, and was inhabited. Halley proposed that the planet is made up of numerous nested spherical shells that are revolving around a common core. Based on readings of the magnetic field and what he understood about the gravitational pull of the sun and moon on the Earth, he believed that this model could account for any errors in his readings of the planet's magnetic fields. He also suggested that there might have been light atmospheres capable of supporting life in the areas between each shell. Over the following many centuries, Halley's theory was developed, replacing the confusing idea of several spheres with the idea that the entire interior of the Earth is one unimaginably vast cavern. The belief that a little sun hangs in the very center of the Earth, generating a lush, living environment on the other side of its surface, typically goes along with the new understanding of the hollow Earth. Many hollow Earth websites claim that this idea was created by eminent mathematicians and scientists like Leonard Euler in the 18th century and Sir John Leslie in the 19th. Albeit the sources for these claims are a little hazy. In his initial report of Agartha, French magician Alexandre Saint-Yves de la Vieddre predicted that when anarchy in our world is replaced by synarchy, all of humanity will have access to this hidden planet. The mythical city of Agartha is said to be located deep within our planet. As the capital of Agartha, it is frequently referred to as Shambhala, which is a legendary country referenced in numerous ancient books. It is also known by the names Agartha or Agarthi. Shambhala is also referred to as the realm of living gods, the forbidden land, the land of white waters, and the land of living fire in Hinduism, where it is known as Aryavarta. The idea that the earth is hollow is one that many believers in the supernatural and the inexplicable are familiar with. The theory is based on old myths from numerous cultures that assert that entire civilizations and races of people exist in underground cities. These inhabitants of the underworld are frequently portrayed as having more advanced technology than those of us on the surface. Some people even hold the view that odd beings on Earth create UFOs rather than they come from other planets. Who were these people? Are they even classed as human anymore? How did they end up living underground? And where are the underground city's entrances? Well, according to tradition, an ancient race formerly inhabited the Earth's surface and later relocated to underground cities, establishing its own habitat and needs. A man by the name of Richard Shaver claimed to be a visitor of Agartha, the fabled Forbidden Kingdom. Only a small number of people genuinely believed him because he lacked the necessary proof. He claimed that when their race learned exposure to the sun made them age too quickly, they looked for a new home underground. There are two main races that are believed to live underground as proposed by Shaver, the first one being the race of the Old Ones, a prehistoric race who formerly lived on the Earth's surface before migrating below. They are described as being highly intelligent and a scientifically adept civilization, according to Steiger in his essay titled The Hollow Earth, Myth, or Reality. The Old Ones are hominid, incredibly stoic, and more than a million years older than Homo sapiens. It's been reported that although the Old Ones typically keep their distance from earthly peoples, they occasionally offer constructive criticism and frequently kidnap human children to tutor and raise as their own. 
The second race is named the Elder Race, or the Titans. They are the ones that Shaver claimed he was a guest of when he visited the mysterious underground world. Shaver actually wrote about his time in Agartha in a story published in 1945 in the Amazing Stories magazine. Shaver submitted a letter to the magazine editor Ray Palmer that led to the creation of the story. In his letter, Shaver claimed to have discovered a man tongue, or hidden language, which was a system of sounds with underlined meanings and purported to be the ancestor of all human language. According to Shaver, any other language might be mapped over man tongue to uncover hidden meanings. Palmer replied to Shaver requesting more information about this language, and Shaver replied with a long letter detailing his discovery of Agartha, the underground society of horrible monsters that resided in caves beneath the Earth's surface. These creatures, known as Daros, made sporadic trips to the surface in order to kidnap people and take them back to their lair to carry out cruel experiments on them. This article was so well received by the editor Palmer that he changed it to a fictional account before publishing it in the magazine. This story nearly displaced all other types of content since it sold out of the magazine and was so widely read. A series of stories by Shaver continued to appear in amazing stories as a result. Shaver persisted in creating the world of the underground Darrow, a species of proto-humans who had relocated underground because of their need to stay out of the sunlight. Later, the majority of them would create spacecraft and depart for other stars, leaving their most ungrateful members behind. Rare aristocratic Taros, good aligned, rehabilitated Daros, who endeavored to aid humanity in escaping, were part of the Darrow cosmos as it expanded. A solid sci-fi adventure series should have underground hangars, spaceships, robots, bands of human mercenaries leading a resistance, and other progressively fantastical features. Amazing Story subscriptions increased from 135,000 to 185,000 throughout the duration of the series, which ran from 1945 to 1948. This series helped sell the magazine. Shaver always insisted that this story was factual, despite the magazine being works of fiction. He argued that in our distant past, the Titans, or Elder Race, arrived on this planet from another solar system. After some time on the surface, they recognized that the sun's rays were hastening their aging, so they built enormous underground structures to retreat to. They eventually made the decision to leave Earth in search of a new planet, leaving their underground cities filled with artificial beings, including the wicked Darrow, which are destructive robots, and the nice Taro, which are integrated robots. Admiral Byrd and other explorers from all over the world claim to have endorsed the notion that the forbidding kingdom of Agartha genuinely does exist. It's thought that the entrance of the kingdom of Agartha, located inside the Earth, can be seen on a map created by cartographer Heinrich C. Barron. The Antarctic continent may be seen there without its heavy covering of ice. The presence of underwater tubes that cross the entire continent and appear to converge at the same spot that is recognized as the entrance of the hollow Earth or inner Earth, however, is the most intriguing aspect. Just before setting out on a 2750-kilometer expedition over the North Pole in February 1947, Vice Admiral Byrd declared, I'd like to see the land beyond the Pole. That area beyond the Pole is the center of the Great Enigma. Some claim that Vice Admiral Byrd declared over the radio on his flight to the North Pole in 1947 that there were vast areas of land with mountains, woods, and plants as well as enormous lakes and rivers, as well as creatures that resembled mammoths. After his passing, he said that there was a place beyond the North Pole that was an enchanted continent in the sky, an eternal mystery of Earth. According to other ideas, that region was the fabled Rainbow City, the center of an amazing vanished civilization. The mythology surrounding the inner Earth and its inhabitants also piqued the Nazis' intense curiosity. The legendary Aryan homeland of Thule is thought to have its entrance into Antarctica. Although Atlantis is a lost continent, Antarctica has been connected to it. The connection to Thule is less clear. Greek explorer Pythias first described Thule following his journey between 330 and 320 BC. It's a pretty well-documented hypothesis that Nazis were fascinated with the occult and esotericism and that they investigated polar locations to establish bases and test weapons. The rumors of Hitler eluding capture and escaping to another planet don't end here. 
Evidence suggests that the Nazis spent a lot of time looking for Agartha to use as a safe haven for Hitler in case of an urgent situation. According to a letter purportedly sent by Karl Unger, a member of the German U-boat crew, they reached the interior of the Earth and had no intention of going back. 